Twitter, which by the way, you can follow us at Around the Lens on Twitter. <laughs> Plug. Um, Twitter just is going to um, have some new terms of service that take effect on January 1st. And pretty much here they say that anything you post on their website they own can redistribute and do whatever they want with. Uh, this is sort of, I would say, a bit more, I don't know how their last terms of service went exactly, but it seems like this is a bit more, how do you say, draconian slash uh, overbearing with regard to, you know, what they're going to do. Now, I don't see them actually, you know, taking your imagery and creating, you know, necessarily selling it for profit or whatnot, but you know, it is scary to think that, you know, you're going to post something and then they're going to use it however they want and they're not going to compensate you for it. And, you know, just kind of lead into some rights issues if perhaps someone decides to embed your photograph in their story using the Twitter embed tool. And now they're circumventing the need to pay you for the rights to use your image because they're getting it through Twitter. So obviously there's been you know lots of legal cases and up and downs with that. But uh, what do you all think about this? Are you, are you worried about, you know, your imagery being on Twitter? And, and you know, as our resident Instagram file there, Travis, you know, does Instagram have any sort of similar states? You know, you're the one who you loves, you know, engaging on social media the most, I would say. What are your thoughts on this? Um, I mean, we've gone through the same kind of uh, panics of uh, terms of service, just like this, through through Instagram and Facebook. Uh, everyone kind of freaks out and says, "Oh my God, they're going to do something," and all all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and you know, at the end of the day, you know, um, that may be the case, but they've never done it, and uh, it seems uh, the larger legal battle of that and them doing that has never been kind of really fully tested yet. And uh, there's been little pokes, but they've never really taken a photograph and like used it for anything like, oh, we're going to use this for advertising. We're going to use this, you know, for you know books and stuff like that. Never done that yet. And I think Twitter is uh, jockeying just to do the same kind of terms of service. And I, I don't know if it's for more self you know, self-promotion of what they're doing. I don't think they're going to use it for books and, and, and ads and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, at least there's some hope, you know, Twitter bans certain people and hate and, and stuff like that, which Facebook is not doing. So I have a little more trust in them at, at present you know, uh, than, than some of the other big ones like Facebook, which is just really, I mean, I, I put so much time in, and connect to so many people on Facebook and every day I'm like, mm, maybe I should just drop them because I'm not in agreement with uh, what, what he's doing and especially letting, you know, ads and political ads that are knowingly are, are false and stuff like that. And just taking the money and saying it's not a responsibility. You know, I have a real problem with that, but uh, I put so much into it. It's hard to just pull away from that. And uh, so it's a real kind of social uh, conflict I'm having in my head on that. But I, I don't think, uh, I think this Twitter thing's just a story right now. And I, you know, it's, I don't think it's anything to raise your hairs and get worried about. And, uh, and uh, I, I don't really use Twitter because I'm a visual person. I've never seen, you know, Twitter, of course, you can post an image, but it's just not the same as Instagram or Facebook for me or, you know, right. or any of those types of things. No, that's the thing I was thinking, too, is like I never thought of Twitter as like a platform for visual journalism, for photography, anything. I mean, it's it's basically I go there and I see people tweet storming and tweet fighting and stuff like that. But, you know, most of the stuff on there is like memes and whatnot. I think it's interesting, though, where, you know, you like see, you can, if you apply this to Instagram or other platforms that are more photo focused, you know, I wonder if, you know, if, if Instagram said we hereby own the rights to your imagery and they do things with it, would you change, not use that platform? Would you change the way you present imagery on that platform? You know, perhaps watermarking it more often yeah, or I think changing the resolution? I mean, I, I'm very conscious of only putting up, you know, a certain amount of DPI and, uh, and, and, uh, you know, long edge pixel on my, you know, so it, it can't be blown up and it can't be on. But if they're, if they were going to say, we're going to steal your image. Yeah. Maybe I'd embed big old Travis in there and, you know, oh, you want to use it? Fine. It's free advertising for me. Boom, go for it, you know, and uh, take advantage of it that way. But I think, uh, you know, when we see the first person it happens to, we'll all, you know, I, it, you would see a mass exodus if they actually did that. So I don't think they would do that. It'd be, it, it, if the first big photographer they take and they use their stuff, then it, they would lose so many people instantly that I don't see it as a benefit for them. And it would, it would be a very crashing situation for them. I also think that someone said, said somewhere um, that any service that you're using that's free, you, you are what your data, your whatever you're uploading there, you are the, that's how you're, you're the product for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so exactly. I think that like, that's something that's very, I try and keep in mind whenever I use anything that my, whatever I'm, 
providing them by engagement, by data that I'm putting in, by data that they're collecting is is what they're taking away. So that's sort of my, I think that more, I read the, the clause and it just, the in the new terms of service, the rights, whatever you're uploading, they own, they can sublicense. And the language is just so familiar to a bunch of contracts that I've received, going back to what we talked about before, and how important it is to read through contracts that you receive from clients and negotiate your contracts, because they are often negotiable. And that, like, is some of the best advice. That, when I realized, like, when I was a young photographer and, you know, would read through every contract I received, but didn't realize I could go back with it, um, with edits, as soon as I found out that you could, that was some of the best advice I've ever received, because I think it's so important to and the number of photographers that I meet that talk about contracts that they've signed eight years ago when they were just starting and didn't realize they can negotiate them and need to go back and revise them later on which publications are often also willing to do if you have an established relationship with them and you signed it a long time ago that is like super and the, and the truth of the matter is is is, is if someone presents something they may just like oh maybe they won't read it or they, you know we'll just yeah. you know, oh we'll lock this in but as soon as you you do strike something out they take you a lot more seriously They're like oh well maybe we, we got to take this person seriously it's, it, it changes mm-hmm. the level and uh, even when you don't think you know, if you question stuff then that it's, it just puts you in a better position I think and it makes you then take you more seriously you know you, you, always always come back with one cross you guys off, like, <laughs> good experiences. I had a client, well, I'm going to name the client. I had a um, Kaiser health news approach me to shoot a feature this year and it was local. And I read the contract very carefully. And there was one mm-hmm. sentence that if I went out and shot the story and then it wasn't published, I wasn't going to get paid. Oh and my God. I lined it. And the editor was like, well, I have to run it up the flagpole would not budge on that. Now I knew that this story was not going to get killed because a staff writer was flying in, but you never know. There could have been some major health news and it just got canned Yeah, and I wouldn't do it. I just, I, and so they hired another photographer locally. Uh, and um, so it doesn't always go in your favor, but I felt like, okay, A, this client isn't going to necessarily change my life and my career, but it angered me to the core. And I was really mad. I mean, I understand another photographer needs work, but you know, uh, that seemed like a ridiculous thing. And, and I, I posted on Facebook, I tried to get some exposure and a bunch of other uh, writers chimed in and said, well, that happens to us all the time. Like if our stories don't get published, we don't get paid. And I said, well, that's not the way it works for photographers. And I don't know why you guys, or they get a kill fee, but um, anyway, yeah. so, you know, you can- a Kill fee? Yeah. If they don't run your story, kill fee. Uh, you know, that happens too if you don't shoot something. Like, they get sold yeah. before. Yeah. Okay, and a bunch of kill fees. But, you know, so it's great that we all do that. But I didn't I didn't win. And I, I, I couldn't understand why the photo editor who sought me out, I, I didn't approach them. They found me. They wanted to work with me. Wouldn't. for It was like $400 or something. You know, it's like, why wouldn't they stand up for the photographers? You know? I think it's a good yeah. signal. To I think it's like a good way to gauge if there's something really egregious in the contract and they won't change it that's a client if, I mean this is something that you have to if you're trying to make a living this is something that might not always be possible but I think if you are super busy and you're deciding what to I think that like making sure that you're working with clients that will prioritize your safety and your rights is super important oh, absolutely. and having so like that's a good signaling mechanism that you know that if they won't even pay you for work that you've already done regardless of whether or not it's going to be published is something that's like, okay, this client won't even do that bare minimum. Then that's something to, that's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. No, stand up for yourself and definitely stand up for what you think is right. Uh, now, if you're going on there and being like, listen, I want brown M&Ms. No, and, no, no. Uh, I think that there's a fundamental difference though, uh, between <laughs> there's nothing, there's nothing diva esque about saying like, I need to get paid. I need to get paid on exactly. time. I need to be safe. I spent my time. I used yeah. my car, used my equipment. I didn't take yeah. any other assignments. Yeah, yeah. And because yeah. you end up not publishing the story, you're going to hire me, but then not pay me. I mean, it's beyond yeah, it's an cash. editorial decision. And the people that are employed by the, whatever the publication is, have a salary. Their salary is not getting held, withheld because they're, so yeah. I think that that's like super important and a really good point to bring up. 
yeah. and a little self-promotion yeah. here. That's why organizations such as mine are very important, like American Photographic Artists, because we sit there. We're stronger as a, a larger voice than solo voices. And if we support each other and lobby yeah. for each other and, and we're out there, you know, it, it, it uh, gives us a stronger foot to stand on. So it's one of the reasons, you know, that, you know, APA is so important to me. It's like, you know, we'll send down and lobby for the Case Act and lobby for, you know, uh, uh, copyright law and stuff like that yeah. in Washington and really support our, our, our photographers and give a yeah. uh, a network of people that kind of, uh, you know, like, hey, they, they put this in my contract. Should I do this? Right? And we can really kind of sound off on each other and help yep. each other. Yeah. So, you know, since we're talking about this, uh, with regard to payment, right, are you in, is the contract um, uh, identify how you get paid? So, for instance, is like, I'll get paid in 30 days, 60 days. Can I, you know, I keep on hearing like they're trying to push back when they actually pay you for your effort or is it something like oh i want to get paid right now as usually i do usually the first. bigger and more money they have the longer they take to pay you right <laughs> it and it i mean it varies publication by publication and the and you know i i know photographers that are very good about putting in late fees especially if you're yeah. funding expenses you're paying late fees on your credit cards if you're not if you're not getting your re, yeah. you're not getting reimbursed in time and you don't have savings so mm -hmm. There are some photographers that are very good about including late fees and interest charges in their invoices. Um, and I think that that's just a case by case knowing, you know, I think there are some publications that are pay on time always. And there are some publications that never pay on time and it's a fight. So I think right. that, yeah. There Maybe. has to be, yeah. I think the more upfront you are in asking and, and doing your due diligence of asking the questions up front yeah. and not being just, oh, it'll be okay. You know, you yeah. really need to ask those questions up front and, you know, you have yeah. to have your little list of like, when am I getting paid? Is there, you know, late fee? Uh, you know, you have to be yeah. really upfront about all this. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, if there's nothing else you all want to add on this particular subject, we can wrap up this week's show. Um, Elizabeth, go ahead and throw out where people can find out more about you or your work or something you'd like to highlight. Sure. Um, I have a website. It's my full name with my middle initial, elizabethdherman.com. My Instagram handle is the same. Um, and thank you guys so much for having me. I think it's incredibly important to talk about all these sorts of, uh, you know, all these contract issues and advocating for yourself, especially as you're working independently and how to you know, form connections with other photographers and other groups so that you can advocate for yourself more, more effectively. Yeah. You know, it's funny, you mentioned your Instagram handle, but you didn't mention your Twitter handle. I don't use Twitter and it's <laughs> different from my, so my Twitter handle is Biz Herman. If you want to. Yes, photos, that was difficult to find. If you want to see retweeted, retweeted, uh, retweeted dog tweets, then that's, that's my content that I post mostly there. Um, but it's, I, you know, it's whichever you want to follow. You'll there's more content on on my Instagram, but I, the dog content is very good, but it's not my own. <laughs> I'm gonna see those dog tweets. Rough, rough. Oh, wow, rough, rough, rough. Um, Evelyn, anything for us before we sign off tonight or this morning? Everybody have a good week. Enjoy. If you're like me, it's like holiday party central, squeezed into a busy work week. So. Enjoy the season. Um, Twitter, yes, follow uh, at Around the Lens. Yeah. yeah. I, I follow, yeah. So uh, there you go. Everybody have a good week. Thanks, Elizabeth, for being with us. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Indeed. Uh, Travis? Yeah, as always, uh, to can you continue the conversation and uh, tell us what you like, don't like, and uh, and uh, follow up or continue this conversation going, please reach out to us at Around the Lens. Uh, we always love, love your response, and, uh, and it helps us uh, program what we do in the future and uh, and uh, how we guide ourselves and uh, give create content for you. Uh, if you want to find out more about uh, organizations such as APA, which I'm chairman of in New York, then uh, please reach out because we're really there to support you and uh, build a community that uh, looks after each other. Uh, um, happy holidays to everyone, and uh, thank you, guests, for being here. It's such a pleasure to have you. Of course. Indeed, and uh, just so everybody is aware, next week will be the last episode, uh, recorded live episode of the year. So that's December 17th. Oh, I'm sorry, December 16th. We're going to have that uh, episode, and then we're going to take off two weeks. Um, but I will be publishing our year in review episode. So if there's any uh, best of bits or moments from the year you think I should include in that, please let me know. Go ahead and send me an email or you know, catch me via any of the other platforms. 
beyond that, again, I want to thank our guest, uh, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for taking time out to be on the show. Truly appreciate it. Nice. You're always welcome back. Thanks. Um, for Evelyn Hochstein and Travis Keys, I am David J. Murphy. This has been Around the Lens, episode 204, and we are out. Thanks for listening to Around the Lens. We hope you enjoyed the show. To continue the conversation, head on over to one of our social media outlets, such as Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or Twitter. To support the show financially, consider donating to us via Patreon. For show notes from this week's episode and links to everything else we talked about, just go to our website, AroundTheLens.com. Finally, if you or someone you know might be a good guest for the show, get in touch with us via email at info at AroundTheLens.com.